Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Christopher Epling. I'm an artist in Eastern Kentucky. I'm also an illustrator and a comic book creator. Um, I favor mini comics and small press expos and things of that nature. But one of my biggest concerns is that students aren't getting enough um, experience or, or um, exposure to creating um, works with sequential art that will uh, enable them to talk about themselves in certain ways that they previously couldn't or can't in other formats. So every, sto every student and every person has a story to tell, whether that's a biographical story or a take on a certain idea, a concert, concept, or things of that nature. So my, my biggest goal really is to show the world and students in particular that you can create works and share those works with others and it can be fun and, and, and you can learn a lot about yourself and in the process of sharing in the meantime. Um, today, being that it is November the 1st, and this is a tutorial that goes in part with the art workshop through the Kentucky Valley Educational Co-op, the Project Prevent uh, workshop that kicked off eight weeks ago this Monday, is a workshop that centers around um, helping and assisting students learn more about the creating creative process of story building and having that into a printed format at the end. 35 students go on to be published from this with STARS Publishing, which is an independent and nonprofit um, organization that KVEC uh, has created with, through Kelly Thompson that will basically serve to uh, as an umbrella type of uh, organization to help students who are published to have their works out there. But being that it is November 1st and we're just a day after Halloween, I think that it's appropriate to focus on one artist in particular for this workshop. His name is Edward Gorey. He's one of my favorite artists. I have a book here about him. This is not his book, that one of his books he created. This is actually a, a book written about Edward Gorey. Um, Edward Gorey is a fascinating person and artist. He created small um, children's books in the 1950s and early 60s. Not a lot of well-known books uh, that, that are around that he created. I guess that you know the popularity of the books vary. Um, those who do know about Edward Gorey, though, do understand that his works are incredibly precious to the to the uh, um, uh, sequential art format because what he did was he he broke down um, panels into individual pages a lot of times and he told stories with these beautifully cross-hatched ink drawings um, using the page uh, as as one panel in many sense. So as a comic is made, it comprised of many panels or boxes, as we've talked about many times in this workshop. Edward Gorey would often use one entire page as his panel. He would frame his uh, illustrations within a box even a lot of times. So we're going to actually be looking at his work a little more in depth today and we're also going to be trying to draw together one of his characters from one of his better well-known books called The Doubtful Guest published in I think 1957. So I hope you enjoyed today's workshop and let's get ready to look at this fascinating artist and, and try to uh, draw together one of his most well-known characters. I guess we'll go ahead and get started. As I said before, today we are talking about Edward Gorey and we're going to be looking a little bit about his um, style of art, also a little bit about the history of who he is as an artist. Now he was born in 1925 and he lived to uh, into the year 2000. Uh, we passed away. He's known as being an American um, um, poet more more so probably than he is, I guess, being a children's book um, artist or author. But he 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 did write these amazing poems and um, these wonderful laid out stories. And this is what I was talking about earlier with panels, as you can see here. Each one of these boxes were actually an individual page of of um, one of his books, and it's and it's actually an untitled book, but. Um, I think the, the panels here moved into the hapless child so what you're seeing is a version of that so so each one of these panels um, were, were, were used as an individual page of a book okay now he's really well known for um, depicting a lot of times these sort of unsettling narratives what I mean by that is that his characters often go through some sort of struggle 
or some some sort of um, um, conflict or 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 some sort of problem happens, and a lot of times it's m mysterious stuff. He 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 loved Agatha Christie. We can see here some of the, the um, some of his sketchbook um, uh, planning for certain pages of books, and 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 this is what we re reference to planning for your book. Um, every artist does this. Every artist plans what they're going to do before they start working on a certain project, but. This is a page from um, what we're going to be drawing today, which is known as the Doubtful Guest. And, and you can see here that there's a lot of scratches. These lines that he uses look like he's just scratched this onto the page. And he has a lot of times because what he used for this in all of his drawings are what's known as a nib pen. And we talked about this at a certain point. The pen that you have to continuously dip in a reservoir of ink and it has a metal nib at the end of it so you're continuously having to apply these lines now of course for this he probably used a brush for the really dark areas but you could see light and around the borders of some of these so I imagine that he he painted the um, interior portion of this figure and other figures that are dark black and then he would cross hatch as we call it um, to get that effect now you can look how just elaborate his cross hatching actually was he was mainly self-taught he was he did attend the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, he grew up in Cape Cod, um, but he was actually born in, um, um, I'm sorry, he grew up in Chicago, Illinois, but he, he, he mainly um, loved the, the uh, East Coast, especially Cape Cod. Now this is planning for, for his book cover. We talked about that in this workshop a lot. This is not the actual book cover for The Doubtful Guest. I guess in the beginning he, he thought about calling it The Visit. So artists will plan. They will plan every detail of their book outright so that before they ever actually see their work sent off. Um, now I'm talking about pub, uh, a creator who's creating something as a small imprint. Um, I don't like the term self-published. There are self-published authors and you can you can really notice those out there. I'm not talking trash about any, any creators, but you, all I'm going to say is you could tell between um, someone who's taken care and, and managed to plan aspects of their book and took pride in that and then someone who just really wants their name on a book. They don't care how it comes out. Um, Edward Gorey was, was um, amazing at telling these haku type and um, Japanese type poems where he would use such uh, play on words. He would rhyme certain words. He, he knew French. He was fluid in French and German. I think Spanish. I don't even know. He knew like four or five different um, different um, foreign languages. I shouldn't say foreign languages, but languages. Um, now, Edward Gorey is, his work is really known for being uh, macabre in a way. I mean, it is a little dark. Sometimes these terrible things happen. He wrote this one children's book that was completely about... Um, the alphabet, but it was different names of different characters and how they lost their lives. I know it says really dark right now, but it's around Halloween, so bear with me. Now, this was considered children's books. In the 1960s, uh, people would read these to their children. I don't think there's, um, with what, what all's out there now, Five Nights at Freddy's and all this other stuff, this is absolutely, completely harmless compared to that. But at the time, though, this was a little dark. So A is for Amy, who fell down the stairs. B is for Basil, who was assaulted by bears. I mean, we're talking... We're talking some scandalous stuff back in the day. But here we go. Here's some more planning. We can look a little bit behind Edward Gorey's actual planning um, for his concept. Um, the Unstrung Harp came out in 1953, and it featured this little guy here. His name was Mr. Earbrass. And he was tormented with ideas. He couldn't get it, this one idea that he'd thought of for a story. He was a writer, and, and he couldn't remember that idea. And I think the whole book is about him trying to recapture that essence. So Edward Gorey, known for his cross-hatching, um, his, his very, very um, detailed illustrations using only pen and ink. He's also created, uh, believe it or not, the introductory, introductory animation for the PBS um, series Mystery. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you have seen that, um, maybe not, but, but his work was all around. Um, he illustrated a lot of works for other people, the book cover design. And um, I have a few more here to show you. Most of his books were these little small books like this, these little tiny books, the epileptic um, uh, bicycle. I mean, at the time, you have to remember when these were published. And this is what I was talking about. He drew pen and ink drawings inside of a border usually on one page. So this would be considered a panel of a comic. And if you were to string all these together, actually, it would probably make, you know, four or five page comic book, really. But, but the way he's laid this out is he's made, made the art 
in a certain way and design this book in a certain way so when you read through it you you turn the page and you recognize this as being artwork standing alone a lot of times we will read through or flip through graphic novels or comics we just pass up the art and we don't think twice about all of the time and detail it took to create each piece these little books i really like edward gory's work a lot um i'm a big pen and ink fan so um i love nibs i love working with that type of uh art so that medium is just to me is just fascinating and what you can pull out you can make these very elaborate crosshatch pieces this is one of um probably the the other statue and you can see in this just how detailed his cross hatching really was it's amazing stuff if you don't know much about Edward Gorey I highly recommend you going and looking up his work and checking out his work and um, this is titled the other statue it's just amazing stuff these are all children's books from the 1960s late 1950s I actually have one of a first edition here uh, it was given to me as a gift um, this is the Jumblies, so you can see here back in, uh, let's see, 1968 is when this was published. Though That's what the um, inscription says there, but let me put, turn it here to the copyright page if I can find it. I probably won't be able to. Um, not 1968, so you can see here um, his work is just, just amazing. It's beautifully done, the amount of detail. And I think I read somewhere that he actually created this to scale, so when he drew this page... If you had this original artwork, it would be this size right here. So think about that and then look at the detail that he put into his work. Um, mystery, um, suspense, those types of things. If you like those types of stories, then I highly suggest you checking out Edward Gorey. So let's take a second now to, um, we're going to be drawing one of his characters. As I promised, the doubtful guest is what we're focusing on today. My materials I'm using is a number one, um, um, a number one micron pen. I'm also using a, a Pentel brush pen and a number, let's see, a B pencil. Um, that's it. And of course an eraser. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, this character, we looked at this character a little earlier. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like here. Um, the Doubtful Guest. That's what we're going to be drawing. If you'd like to see what Irigori looked like, um, Google, Google him. I won't spoil that. I'll keep that as something you can look up on your own and check it out. So let's draw the doubtful guests together. So the first thing we're going to do is always we're going to go ahead and add our shape in here. I'm going to put an oval. Just going to draw an oval. It's an elongated oval. And notice how I keep going over and over until I get the shape I want. The, the oval I wanted, I wanted a slant to it. So once I have that, remember this is the planning phase of your drawing. So you can reshape things and get things where you want it um, in this phase, okay? So this is what this is about. Now the line going up this character's back is actually almost like a curved straight line. So it comes down like this. It actually goes up like this to the head. Now the head is also an oval, so we'll go ahead and draw an oval at the top just like that, okay? It's wearing a scarf. Um, We'll add that later. The body comes down at a slope. And then we're going to go ahead and put a couple of feet on him. One here. And he's got another right here. And this leg actually bends up. He's leaning a little bit forward. So that's what we're going to do. Now notice I'm just roughly sketching this stuff out. He has an arm about here on this side. And then one hanging forward on this side. Now that right there alone looks nothing like Edward Rory's The Doubtful Guest. It looks just like a bunch of circles and ovals. This is the process though that we use in order to create our character known as the Marvel Method um, or the Circle Method. I really don't know what it's called but I like it and it works really well. I call it the Marvel Method though. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, four ovals, no five, six, sorry, six ovals and then the pieces here to join the legs. So before I'm going to draw the head, I'm going to go ahead and get an idea where the scarf is. The scarf wraps around like this. There's another piece down here, something like that. And then, of course, it's flowing out the back here. So I'll go ahead and just sketch those in and add another one here. I do this so I, I want to know where the elements of my drawing are on the paper. 
Uh, it helps me to understand where the head will be, where the neck will be, where the arms will be, things like that. Now the head comes up to a point and then it slopes forward, straight line, sloping gently out to the tip of the nose. Now what I'm doing is I'm going back over my shapes and I'm starting to actually add a little more um, definition in there. See how the head is now taking shape, it doesn't look just like an oval. Uh, this will go down to the scarf area, the scarf wraps down. I'm adding this detail in with my pencil over top of the lines that I've made. Okay, I'm just adding to it. Um, this is not a. This is not the end result. I could go back. I could change this around. I could do different things with it. Its eyes about right there. So add the circle in for the eye. This is not at all the uh, final phase of the drawing. That really comes when you add ink. So you have time to move stuff around. If you don't like the way a certain thing is shaped, you can fix it. Um, I do that a lot with my work. I will correct stuff as an artist. You always, you're always uh, correcting yourself. You're always finding that, that you can do something a little different. So you, you try it out, and if it works, you stick with it. And if it doesn't, you you move on. So the body comes down. It's almost like he's stepping out with one leg a little bit. The other arm comes out this way. He kind of looks like a penguin, this character, a little bit to me. I don't know if it is or not. I don't think Edward Worre ever said what it was. It's not a known creature. It's something he made up. Now, it's wearing tennis shoes. Edward Gorey and Schultz both drew shoes in a, just a very fast, fun way. Nothing, nothing a lot of detail to it. Um, Schultz had more rounded-looking um, shoes to his characters, the Peanuts characters. Um, Edward Gorey usually had these very thin tips to his shoes. It came out to a point. There's a circle. I guess these are converse. That's what we'll call them. All right. So then, of course, we got to remember the little frills on the end of the scarf here. We'll add those in more in detail. So this is pretty much the doubtful guest right now. This is everything we need. What we're missing though is the magic that came with Edward Gorey's work, and that's the cross hatching. Um, you can go ahead and add these lines in to help you to show you where you're going to be cross hatching on the scarf a little bit. He, this is not. Um, foreshadowing. This is actually lines on the scarf that Edward Gorey drew in. I guess it's some sort of a pattern. So we'll add those in there. It came up the front like this and then also here. So now I'm just adding more details. These are things I'm going to decide I'm going to keep. I'm going to take away. I don't know yet. But what you can do at this point with the pencil is go ahead and put in your shadowing. This is where you're going to be inking the heaviest a little bit later. Um, remember, you're going to be erasing all this pencil line underneath. So um, this is just to help kind of give you an idea when you start to ink it. You know, this is bright. This is, has less, uh, less ink on it than the portions around it. And this helps to remind you of that, OK? And up at the top here for the head. Now, the lines that Edward Gorey would create um, often went in one direction when he wanted to show a certain pattern or lighting. What I mean is all those little lines go this way, right? They go out, okay? All of these lines down here go down. Follow the curvature of the body of whatever it is you're, you're creating with these lines, and it helps to add to that effect of shadow. Um, when I do this right here, that's just all black. I'm not, but here I'm following that again. I'm drawing the lines going down towards his feet. Same on each side. So there we go. That's pretty much the doubtful guest, minus maybe a little bit of shadowing over here on the arm. Now we're going to ink this, and I, like I said, um, we're going to be using a brush pen and a Micron number one. This isn't a number one point. This is a felt tip, so it's a little bit broader. It makes a either very very thick or really really thin lines depending on how hard you press down. Those are the two pins I chose to use. The brush pin is just what it sounds like. It's a brush tip so you can add a whole lot of ink on there at one time if you want. Okay, Mine might be running a little dry. I have to put another refill cartridge in there. So now what I'm doing, I'm going to go back over and all these areas that were really dark, I'm going to keep those very dark by just making large blocks of ink, okay? 
and I've shadowed this in before so with pencil I already know where I'm going to go with this before I ever start down here is very dark this leg is very dark over here this area here anyway right? um, so we're going to fill this stuff in because it really saves us a lot of time when we go to cross hatching because we don't have to fill all this area in with little little tiny lines uh, for cross hatching okay so I'm just going over it now filling the areas in with black that are going to be solid that's what I'm doing now you could purchase a brush pen like this I didn't start out with anything like this I used a just a regular brush you will need some ink though so it's, they're not, it's not that expensive you can find it at any hobby store if you're lucky enough to have a chain hobby store around you um, you could definitely find it there okay so you can find these things out there they're nothing that nothing really special or anything okay the brush pen like this has a has a cartridge in it that I can replace so I don't have to continuously go and dip it in uh, ink, dip it in an ink bottle or ink reservoir nor do I have to um, worry about purchasing a new pen every time this runs out there's cartridges that go in there it has a lot of black around his eyes alright so see how I've shaded in now all the really dark areas of this character the rest of this is actually going to be done using the number one micron pen um, this is where we'll actually do our, our um, shadowing using lines um, I'm hesitant about calling this cross hatching just because um, when you cross hatch you make lines in one direction and you go back over like this now you can do it very very thin very close together I should say and it makes it look dark he does this to a certain degree with this but all of his lines are going in one direction like I said earlier so like around the head here all the lines are going up see how it's going towards the tip of the nose and that's what he's doing here okay so we're not really cross hatching but we're using that method uh, nonetheless in certain to a certain degree we're making the small lines to fill up space so so you see how that works we're, we're drawing down now following the shape of the arm I'm coloring in a little heavier where my black solid black stops okay except for on the tips of the arm here because this is where um, this is a separate part of the body alright so we're just following our shapes now I left this area here a lot earlier I didn't darken that in I didn't ink that in because like I said at the beginning of this tutorial um, when we started drawing he leaves areas that are white around the tips of his drawings um, and that's how I probably got that effect like I showed you earlier at the dinner table by doing this okay so we're just making tons of these little lines and when we get closer to the black areas we're coloring it a little heavier and we're going to continue this process until our character is finished you get the idea though think about much, how much time it would take if I was really sitting down to do this and wanted to do a uh, not so this is a fast job I wanted to do make this look exactly like one of Edward Gorey's drawings which I actually did <laughs> believe it or not I drew um, I drew one of these characters and sent it to the Edward Gorey Museum that's how much I like this artist He's, his work is really influential in me with my work and um, I sent it to him and believe it or not they put it up in the museum which I thought was pretty nice of them to do but that particular piece I sent took me a very long time um, nowhere near as quick as this one but you do get the idea at least uh, for these tutorials I like to do quick drawings and I like to show you the basics and once you have the basics you're able to go with it so there's his tennis shoes now for the scarf you're following these lines out just like you did earlier and what you're going to do then is all the little patterns that you see you're going to just do straight lines following your pencil lines you made earlier and 
we just about have it. So Edward Gorey, amazing artist, American treasure in my mind. I think he's just brilliant. Um, if you don't know any of his work, if it's the first time you've ever seen any of his work. Tim Burton, another artist, they, um, they speak about how much of an influence Gorey was in their lives as artists. So if you think about that for a second, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Edward Scissorhands and a few more, uh, those things would have never happened, maybe, in the way they did, the way they were created anyway, had it not been for artists like Edward Gorey influencing these folks. So see how I go back now and I'll just take out all my pencil lines. Hopefully the ink's dried. <laughs> These videos you never can tell. Sometimes I've went to an erase and the ink just threw it everywhere. Luckily I'm using felt based pens today. Markers. So it should erase fairly easy. But there you go. The doubtful guest. And always remember to put your name on your work. And if you want to um, show me how you did on this particular tutorial, go to the holler.org and send me um, a JPEG or a picture of your work right there on the holler.org. Look for the art workshop holler though and share your work. I'd love to see it. Um, I hope everybody had a good time. I hope that you learned a little bit more about the process of uh, building a character using shapes again. I call it the Marvel method a lot or the circle method but it's a really well-known method. I like to incorporate that though in all my tutorials when we, we talk about basic drawing. Um, a lot of times though, whenever we start to approach a drawing, we look at what we're drawing and we try to figure out how to do it, but we don't ask sometimes why. So why did an artist consider placing a certain shape in a certain area? Why did the artist consider using a certain type of shadowing? Um, let's say watercolor versus cross hatching, which we talked a lot about today. Um, those questions are things that we don't normally think of, but the artist has and did before they created whatever it is that you're looking at. So maybe you should consider that It's just a suggestion. Whenever you go to create something and you have a certain image in your mind of what it'll look like when you're finished, ask yourself throughout that process, why am I choosing to use colored pencils? Why am I choosing to make this line larger than this line? Or this color, um, this hue more, more um, light than dark? So these are just questions that artists um, do ask each other, believe it or not. And also, if you consider going on to art school or participating somehow after high school within the art community or art as an as a, um, educational background, then these questions are definitely going to come up. So let's get used to try to trying to talk about those a little bit now. Well, this is uh, the the, the um, I think the sixth tutorial um, accompanying the Project Prevent 2016 KVEC art workshop. I hope you had a great time uh, learning a little bit about Edward Gorey and his style of art. So. Um, Till next time, keep drawing.